Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in to hear my trading and market updates. This is Uncle Frank and I'm not a financial advisor, nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the presentation and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're alerted when I have new information to share. So now let's get into the latest updates. Hey, welcome back everyone. So Uncle Frank, why are you so focused on black or white swan events as opposed to AMC returning to profitability again, for example? Because if you can't see that AMC is being artificially manipulated downward, especially when you compare it to its closest competitor, Cinemark, then we really don't have much to talk about. AMC is down nearly 95% year over year, and the biggest difference is Cinemark is run by executives from the theater and entertainment space, while AMC is run by distressed credit, private equity, and hedge fund executives. If you can't admit that, you're in denial. The only reason the hedgies can do what they're doing right now is the ape and its conversion. Without that, we'd have experienced a short squeeze long ago, in my opinion. Remember when there was very little stock available to lend and short and the cost of borrow fee was around 1,000%? So what happened? The ape and its conversion, exactly what Wall Street needed. Ape went from being a like security to a real locate. And that's exactly what Wall Street wanted. And Adam, Citi, and Morgan Stanley delivered it to them. Stop arguing any different unless you read the emails from the Allegheny case for yourself, where they outline Project Popcorn. Recently, there have been millions of AMC to lend and short available at a rate under 2%. Why? The ape and its conversion. All Adam had to do is keep the stock from running with tweets about dilution. Problem solved for Wall Street. But the biggest reason my focus is on swan events is because I know what really hurts our enemies, the predatory short hedge funds and the prime brokers that back them up, that loan them money, that run their trades. And I promise you, it won't be AMC's earnings or a new regulatory crackdown from Goober Gensler, especially during an election year. It will also not be a magic dividend in the future. Not if it's the same guys that planned the ape, planning the same dividend. No, what really hurts the hedgies is on your screen. Look at this article from January of 2009 from CBS News. Hedge funds took a serious hit in 2008. Nearly 700 funds, 7% 7 of the industry, shut down in the first three quarters of 2008. Up over 70% from the same period last year, According to Hedge Fund Research, a Chicago-based data firm, I just wish some of you could see what an amazing company in stock AMC could be without Adam Aaron, without Sean Goodman, without Philip Lader, without Derek Van Zant of City, without Hamanshu Galati of Antara. Over the past three years, these men have made hundreds of millions of dollars and we lost billions in market cap. How many times do they have to screw you over before you open your eyes and demand better leadership? And now they're asking you to vote again, aren't they? Are you gonna vote to help the executives that destroyed your stock? Or are you gonna vote for what's best for the company and the shareholders? Nearly every day, someone jumps in my chat to make fun of me. Hey, Uncle Frank, where's your swans? These are the same guys that say without the ape, we'd have been bankrupt. Adam saved the company. No, sorry. We could have sold our preferred shares in a separate offering instead of giving them away for free as a dividend, raising far more capital, and the apes would have gobbled them up. But that approach wouldn't help Wall Street, so we didn't go that way. Well, this weekend, comments like that have suddenly stopped. Now even the biggest Adam Aaron ass sniffers are feeling the approach of the swans and wondering how serious the impact may be. On Friday, 
We watched the markets drop hard, and then we watched the crypto market sell off. Now our focus shifts to which swan will land when, and will there be a domino effect? Meaning, will one swan landing force another one, and so on? Let's mark up the calendar and see if we can guess which box a swan might land on. And according to tip ranks, there's three economic events that could affect your portfolio this week. So according to tip ranks, no friends of ours, there are three economic events that we should watch for this week. March retail sales on Monday the 15th. March's industrial production on Tuesday the 16th. And March's existing home sales change on Thursday the 18th. Now I could put these events on the calendar, but it's the unscheduled events that I'm the most concerned about. So on your screen are the April and May calendars. Now the hedgies tiptoed through last week. They survived the eclipse, CPI, PPI, a couple major sell-offs in the market, and over the weekend, a major sell-off in crypto. But it's the things you can't put on the calendar that I'm most concerned about. For the first time in history, Iran attacked Israel. But will the war in the Middle East go beyond drones? Then, of course, the Bitcoin halving is expected next week by April 20th. But some believe it could happen sooner. Then, of course, you've got the cicada apocalypse. Now, we do have earning, earnings reports from Goldman Sachs, Netflix, American Express, and United Health Group. But the following week, Thursday, April 25th, GDP for Q1. Friday, April 26th, is a big one. The PCE group of data, that's the Fed's favorite indicator personal income and spending, and consumer sentiment. Now, on May 8th, we've got the preview of the Planet of the Apes, and on Friday the 10th is the official release. Believe it or not, I think the apes are going to show up for this one more than any one before. Now, I've also got two cat events, one on May 24th and one on May 31st. On Sunday from Variety, Box Office, Civil War sets A24 record with $25 million debut. I know some of you wonder why I cover this kind of material, but I think it's very important to remind Wall Street and our enemies that movies shown in theaters have been setting records again and again and again since we emerged from the pandemic and while they've been shorting us into the ground. You know, guys, I think the hedgies would prefer we focus on the manipulation of our stock instead of all the progress we've made since the pandemic while also enduring two Hollywood strikes. These are the kind of things the financial media, Richie Greenfield, Charlie Gasparino, and sadly, even our own investor relations department never want to mention. Coming in at number one, Oppenheimer. That was the highest grossing biopic of all time. Number two, Barbie, first billion dollar movie by solo female director and highest grossing live action movie by a female director. You know, Barbie is the highest grossing Warner Brothers movie in the studio's history, but she's also broke 17 records so far. Guys, this is all since the pandemic. Number three, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, highest earning animated comic book movie. Number four the Super Mario Brothers movie, biggest animated opening weekend, and highest grossing video game adaptation. Coming in at five was Avatar, The Way of Water. That was the first post-pandemic movie to break two billion at the box office. Number six, Top Gun Maverick, highest grossing Memorial Day weekend opening ever. Number seven, Frozen 2, Highest grossing animated movie of all time. Number eight, Joker. Highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. Number nine, The Lion King. I think that was during the pandemic. Highest grossing PG movie of all time. Then there's The Avengers coming in at 10. Endgame, highest opening weekend and briefly the highest grossing movie of all time. Do I even have to mention the eight box office records? broken by Taylor Swift, or recently seven box office records 
broken by Godzilla minus one. We've achieved some amazing things since the pandemic, and I don't think they want us to focus on that. Another thing that's easy to forget is we theater owners have had to endure Hollywood experimenting with woke movies. How many blockbuster opportunities did we miss because Hollywood followed Washington into this failed concept? I think the worst of this is behind us, and I do have some good news. 2024 global box office projections have all been revised upwards. Many new titles have been added to the calendar and the film industry is renowned for being recession proof because in the past theaters have been where Americans went for entertainment when the economy shrank. During the last eight recessions, box office sales increased six times over. If we can get our CEO to stop blowing 25 million on in-theater commercials and instead promote the A-list program, I think even more consumers will appreciate seeing up to three new movies every week for around 23 bucks a month in the theaters, as opposed to shelling out 89 bucks a month like I do for Hulu, which is one movie channel in live TV. I fired them this weekend and replaced them with Sling for live TV. I get Netflix and basic Hulu for free with my T-Mobile account, so all we need to do is let the movie public learn what an enormous value an A-list membership really is, especially if you carry the branded credit card the way I do, which helps make concessions more affordable. Breaking news for my gold and silver bugs from Seeking Alpha Sunday. Gold upgraded at Goldman Sachs amid geopolitical risks. And one of the world's biggest gold bugs is getting ahead of himself again. From Yahoo Finance, have fun staying poor. Peter Schiff issues dire warning to Bitcoin investors. And then from CoinGate, Bitcoin critic Peter Schiff predicts $20,000 Bitcoin price crash. And then Benzinga, Peter Schiff foresees Bitcoin's biggest crash ever. And my favorite from Coindesk, gold bug Peter Schiff says he wishes he bought Bitcoin in 2010. Peter, please focus on gold and precious metals. Stay off of crypto. Stay in your lane. From Sunday morning, 7 a.m., China is about to start bidding. Will Hong Kong Bitcoin ETFs spark the halving rally? Mega whales with over 10,000 Bitcoin are accumulating ahead of Hong Kong's approval of the first spot Bitcoin ETFs that could happen next week. Pushed up by central banks, B of A sees gold at 3,000, UBS at 4,000, Goldman at 2,700. We have a much bigger problem than they acknowledge. That's why the price of gold is at a record high. That's why it's going to keep going up. And for my silver bugs, is silver about to do a coca? China and inflation are probably driving silver demand, and it is still very cheap relative to gold, not investment advice or advisor. There's still a ton of cash on the sidelines, guys, but there's been a downtick. U.S. domestic deposits tumble $60 billion as small bank loan volumes shrank most since Silicon Valley Bank. Money market funds saw a small outflow last week, surprisingly small given how close to tax day we are, leaving them still near record highs over $6 trillion. And the trend of increased deposits at banks has been accelerating. From the Cryptopolitan only two hours ago, Ripple strategic XRP release fuels rumors of SEC settlement. Ripple has unlocked 500 million XRP from escrow in two transactions. The first transaction brought 200 million XRP, sold for around $123 million. And the second one created another 200 million XRP that cost approximately $184 million. But this one is odd since Ripple usually arranges them for the first day of any month. And guys, I'm going to break it off like this. Retaliation risk. What Wall Street thinks ahead of market open. 
The key is what Israel's answer will be and then Iran's answer to that. Whatever the outcome, guys, our hedgy enemies have far more to worry about than we AMC XRP investors do. Hey, I want to thank you for watching, and please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.